Hey guys, today I am going to walk you from start to finish through the process for this watercolor commission. We're gonna be putting skills we learned from my free watercolor course, Watercolor Basics, to good use here. Keep watching. Hey guys, so today we're going to be working on a Christmas commission and it is a couples commission. I'm gonna take you guys step by step through the process. Step one is drawing it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sketch the couple then I'm going to scan that sketch and I'm going to possibly tighten it up digitally, make some corrections, which I may or may not be able to share with you guys. Depends on if I can get my streaming stuff working. Um, and then I'm going to print that out onto watercolor paper with blue lines. I've demonstrated that for you guys here on this channel a few times. And then we're gonna to get to painting. So it's a little hard for me to properly get proportions when my paper is just flat out on the table. So I will have to prop it up. And I begin by kind of just getting their basic gestures in. Now that the basic gesture has been drawn, I'm going to start sketching in their figures. And the reference I have, I don't actually have permission to air it. And since it's human beings, I don't necessarily feel comfortable showing you guys. Um, but they are dressed in Ren Fair garb and I've drawn his torso too big. It's okay, this is the sketching st stage. And I like sketching in color pencil, even though it isn't necessarily erasable because I'm able to sort of build things up softly and I can always do a layer of tissue paper over it for refinement. And I can always use Photoshop to further refine it. So I'm actually, I'm sketching him first because even though they're both kind of leaning together, um, he's the one who is standing the most upright. And so it gives me the best notion of scale. And I probably shouldn't be recording this because every time I draw and talk, I have a lot of trouble doing so, but definitely wanted to have more drawing tutorials here on this channel. I'll zoom in for you guys. And the only way I can get better at drawing and talking is by drawing and talking. So sort of the saving point for me is knowing that I can fix this and that I do have options to fix it. And this is actually commissioned by a friend of the couple as a Christmas gift, which is actually really nice of that friend to do. And then, now that I've kind of gotten him to scale, I can sketch her in and she's wearing a dress so I can't see her legs like at all. And sometimes I will try to sketch in the legs because I do think it makes for a stronger illustration. But in this instance, because I since I can't tell at all, I'm just going to rough in her skirt. And I can't actually see his other arm. He's actually wearing a cloak that obscures a lot of his figure. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm going to have to put at least one sheet of tracing paper on this and do my tightening on that since I'm sketching pretty dark. Right, so I have a very 
basic figure sketch of the two. I'm going to go grab a sheet of tracing paper and continue. All right, so I've got my tracing paper in place. I'm going to go ahead and sharpen that pencil. And hopefully get to work. So I'm going to lightly try and refine my details. Now usually we'll start from the face. I really wish I knew what was going on with that other arm because it would help me stage this a little bit better. I really can't, I really can't tell. <laughs> And since he's wearing a cloak that obscures so much of his body, I'm going to start sketching that in even before I finish drawing the rest of the figure. The reason I'm doing that is because it plays such a big role in how his figure reads. He's wearing a black cape and the lighting in this picture means a lot of the folds are just lost. They're just completely obscured. And I think I'm going to, I'm going to watercolor this. I think I might just run with that and use that as a stylistic device. Since if done properly, it can look pretty cool. Looks like he's got, it's so hard to tell with some of these things too. I'm gonna have to digitally scooch them closer too because she is leaning really close to him and I didn't draw her leaning over enough, but I also don't want to draw her leaning over him too much and lose a lot of her detail. And at this stage, I also don't need to draw every detail either because I'm going to further refine this digitally before printing out my blue lines. At this point, if I draw too many details, I'll be so invested in my sketch that I'm not going to be willing necessarily, or it's going to be annoying and a waste of my time to add in further details because I will have already drawn so many. He has a pouch right there. And he's wearing these pants that are, looks like they're tucked into boots. And for me, the ability to work mixed media, combining digital with traditional 
sort of gives me the opportunity to make the best work I can. Since I have a lot of opportunities to tighten things up, revise, resize, adjust things without necessarily having to redraw the entire piece. I know somebody who works I can't tell what that is. Oh my goodness, I think that's a hand. <laughs> it's not that this is this is a good picture. It's just um, taken on a overcast day and they're also standing in the shade, so a lot of details. It's actually a very cute picture. It's a really flattering picture of the couple. And that's why I was like, oh, that's the one I want to draw. Um, but in terms of using it as a reference, even a washed out picture where I could see everything clearly would be good. This will be a good color reference. So I want to make his shoulder stick out a little more. Okay, so that is a basic body sketch of him. I know it's not that impressive right now. That's okay. Now I'm gonna work on getting her sketched in. And then I'll see, I moved her over a little bit and now she's too much on top of him. She's wearing these really cute elf ears. And it looks like she's kind of got a corseted thing on. It's hard for me to tell though. I love the velvet green jacket though. That is really cute. That's a really cute jacket. I would probably try to like wear that like in normal everyday <laughs> casual wear. Just try to work it into every outfit. Oh, and I can't tell if it has anything to do with the dress, like if it connects into the dress or not. Ah, it looks like I can't really tell because the photo doesn't capture that but it looks like the green is actually a bodice oh that's cute be harder to work that into your everyday wear but that's cute and just got like a bag attached There's something tied over here. It's a tie and that goes across like that. And this is a commission for my more anime inspired style not so much a realistic hmm i kind of want to make her dress longer so i'll note that and then do it digitally okay and i think this is a good stopping point to take it digital because that way I can work on their faces and do a few different styles for their faces without it actually disrupting the art or me having to redraw things too much. All right, guys, so I've got everything set up. 
I am drawing using a Wacom Intuos Pro 5. And you guys can see that here on the screen. And now I'm back on my drawing screen and I'm sketching in Photoshop. I had some technical difficulties, so I think they are resolved now. I went ahead and embiggened my image to Hue Edge in that it's like 15 inches wide by, um, I don't know by what, but it, the DPI is 600. So that's, that gives me a, a brush point I'm more used to. And I am 110% not used to sketching on this tablet. I usually use my Surface Pro. So this is actually going to take longer than I would like because I'm, there's going to be some learning curve going on. So I already kind of mapped out her face. So I am sketching in where her facial features will be. And this is just an underdrawing. Uh, once this is done, I'm going to reduce the opacity and then tighten that up as well. So I usually have several passes. Oh, that is not what I wanted to do. Um, hopefully I can get used to doing this because I would love to record more digital art tutorials for you guys, or I guess digital art time-lapse videos, since digital art isn't necessarily my forte. And since we're in the sketch phase right now, <laughs> it's okay that everything is kind of rough. I'm going to go ahead and make another layer and set that to multiply because as you guys can see in the reference, his cheek is overlapping hers, but I might opt to have the reverse happen in the illustration. So by adding another layer, I'm giving myself some options. Her features, I mean, this is an anime style portrait, but her features are a little large for what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select them. And holding shift, because I do wanna maintain the proportions, resize them a little bit. There, that's better. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up their faces before I tighten up their clothing. So I'm going to reduce the opacity 
on the facial construction area, layer rather. Right now I'm wearing my glasses and I've got my back brace on. I am in it to win it for the long haul. So I am just really not satisfied with her face. And I'm going to use her face to sort of set the tone. So what I'm going to do, I think this layer here is my, yes, my construction layer. So I'm going to put all of these, wait, I don't want all of, all of those, yeah, into into a folder on its own, and I'll turn that off, and we'll redraw. See, this is why I'm working digitally. At least for this step and I don't always uh, I don't always have a digital step you guys have some seen me work on pieces from start to finish where the entire thing is done traditionally nice thing about having a digital step though is that I can afford to draw things multiple times without having to erase everything without losing that information so I can go back to it if I want to I'm going to have to resize these eyes, probably. I can go back to that information later and be like, okay, I may also have to change my tablet settings. It's been a really long time since I've used this tablet, but I'm going to try to start working on this computer more. Like I said earlier, I'm really do most of my digital work on my Surface Pro 3, but I don't have the space to record on it, and the recording quality on it is not good enough either. And I'm also going to pencil over this. Oh. Ugh. Man, I just really, I'm having a hard time getting into my groove here. And the key is all about finding what works for you. I'm having a hard time doing that. Also, normally don't have to wear my glasses when I'm on my Surface Pro. And I'm also frustrated because they are a really cute couple and this is a really cute picture of them and I want to draw something that reflects that without um, in the style that the commissioner requested, which is kind of an anime uh, inspired style, which is usually my e like the easiest thing for me. At this point, I'm like, this would be easier if I just went realistic. Nope. 
but I want to start using, I want to start doing more digital stuff. And that means being comfortable on this device. So unfortunately, I'm just going to have to plow through and possibly just make a lot of changes when I'm in the penciling stage. See, I was kind of trying to channel deed lit a little bit without going full deed. That might be a little bit better. And then for some reason, this version of Windows keeps hiding my um, navigator. Which I'm sure I'll figure that out once I... Really? <laughs> once I get more used to this version of Photoshop. I could honestly get rid of this. Getting there. It's all about getting settled in. This makes me, I used to use an Intuos, I mean, for years, my first tablet was like um, an Intuos Graphire 3, and then I had a Graphire 4, then I had an Intuos 4, then I had a small Intuos 5, and now I have this large Intuos 5. I've never Oh, and then I got, instead of getting a um, Cintiq, I got a Surface Pro. Uh, so I'm really glad that I never kind of fell into the Cintiq mystique. Because that would clearly be a huge waste of money for me. Because I'm already like, I don't like drawing on this. Honestly, the truth is it's just too big for me to feel like I can do a clean drawing on it. I'm just not used to it. Mm, I'm just going to have to tighten some of these things up digitally. It's all there is to it. And when I was getting my back brace on, grabbing my eyeglasses, I went ahead and saved the file. So I do recommend that you guys save regularly. Photoshop supposedly auto saves. I've had it fail to do that so many times on me that I don't trust it. Oh, I'm gonna have the hardest time pulling the curve on her cheek. what's bad is to be frank doing it like this is a huge waste of my time because I'm sitting here thinking about how I could be doing this a lot faster on another device so I'm making this take longer than it needs to because I want to share this process with you guys and I can't do it on my machine of choice
and I may end up having to redraw this again. Hmm. Now I'm at the commissioner's dilemma because it's like I want, I do want to capture this video to show you guys this stage of the process, and it may not be feasible, and it may not actually be fair to the person who paid me money to do this commission because I'm starting to think that I just won't be able to perform. I may not be able to do the art to the quality that I normally can. So I'm cheating the commissioner at that point. <sighs> really? All right, I'm going to try and do this with a good attitude. I'm gonna try and turn that frown upside down. We'll see, I've never been good at that. I've always been the worst at turning my frown upside down. Oh, or you can get glad in the same pants you got mad in. I can't do that either. Always been hard. I'm the sort of person who has to like get up and go take a walk. Go, go get a snack, go to the bathroom, go play with the cats. Like I have to like avoid <laughs> coming back. So I apologize for all the bad attitude I've been having. I'm gonna try and work with a smile and just do the best that I can and try to try to stifle my frustrations. But I've also decided I'm gonna give this 30 minutes. I'm gonna give this until nine. And if if I can't hit a groove at by nine, I'm gonna unfortunately have to switch over to the Surface Pro, which means I cannot I cannot share this with you guys. So hopefully, hopefully I can hit a groove. Otherwise, that would just make this abandoned video. I mean, even if all I do, I mean, the sketching, this part, which is super sloppy right now, I mean, that's okay, but I'm still having trouble getting used to it. Recommend for you guys is uh, I've got so much going on on my plate that it's really hard for me to like make it a point to do new things. So um, I have to kind of like force myself, like I'm forcing myself by to use my other tablet and to stream or to record this uh, because otherwise I'll never use this tablet and uh, I'll never be able to record digital oh i see how her dress connects now okay it makes sense um i'll never be able to do digital art tutorials or videos i guess and i'm grousing because i hate not being able to do my best work and um i probably will like regardless i will probably have to take this into onto my other computer, the one I'm familiar with, and I will probably have to clean it up and tighten it. But at least I can show you guys, hopefully, some part of the process. And um, at least I can, like, get familiar with, more familiar with this tablet. Now, what I would do if I were you guys in my boat is I would, um, I would A, uh, try to practice using it on non-essential, non-commercial work. So not commissions and uh, maybe don't record it. <laughs> and that way you can step into this, not being a crank butt like I am. But I used to do, um, I used to work for a studio that did uh, commission work for other companies. So I used to work for a company that did contract work for like Lego, for example. And uh, I used to use this computer and this tablet, though not this version of Photoshop, like every day for my work. And it wasn't a problem. So part of my 
frustration is also at the fact that I'm no longer comfortable. And it's probably, oh, and not on this monitor either. Now that I think about it, this monitor is huge compared. And I should probably tweak the resolution on this monitor so it's bigger so I can see, read the text. Cause like that's, I'm wearing my glasses, which are for distance viewing. Um, and I never wear my glasses. Like I don't draw myself with my glasses. You guys aren't gonna see me at cons with my glasses. I just don't wear my glasses cause they give me migraines. Um, so, you know, it's tiny and impossible for me to see if I've relented and started wearing my glasses. It's a little bit better. I am going to tighten it up on the other computer where I'm more comfortable. I apologize for that. That I'm going to like basically cheat you guys of a stage. Getting a little more comfortable with the sketching, but like some of the angles, like, so what I'll do with my Surface Pro is I will literally rotate the tablet so I can get a better angle on things. Like I, because in Photoshop, you can't, you can rotate the canvas, but it doesn't, it, I have trouble rotating it at like, um, I guess I want to say partial quadrants, like say I want to rotate it like 82 degrees. It's like, no, you can't, no, 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 no. And I'm sure like you guys are going to comment like, you dummy, this is how you do that. And I'm grateful. Thank you for telling me how to do that. But uh, I will just physically rotate the tablet. And I can't do that with this tablet for a couple of reasons. One, um, since I'm not drawing directly on the screen, what I see and what my tab the angle my tablet is at is not going to correspond and that makes me a little seasick. Um, and two, uh, it, it will probably just not, I will not, I will still not be able to pull that curve that I want to pull. So I've gotten spoiled guys. Or I've been spoiled, just a spoiled person. Ugh. Man, I remember inking on this thing though when I was doing Doodle Studio's work would take forever because I couldn't pull the lines I can pull on my Surface Pro and I would get so frustrated. And my back was like rickety rickety wrecked. Oh, awesome. It like cut out on my line. <laughs> what the heck? Uh, <laughs> no complaining guys I gotta not complain it's gonna be like one of the LA Beast challenges where he's like no whining and then he <laughs> whines through the entire thing <laughs> that's gonna be me today with this the true challenge I've gotten so used to like my tiny tablet computer for drawing and inking and stuff I can't ink on a real graphics tablet <laughs> so out of out of trollish curiosity for all the folks and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's none of my viewers so i guess this is a rhetorical question for all the people who are like you can't use using reference as a cheat you can't you shouldn't use reference like how do you guys do commissions? Because commissions is very much based on references and likenesses. Like how, how do you guys do that? Do you not, do you just not do commissions because that's just not creative enough for you or something? I'm being totally facetious by, by the way, I think, I mean, I do a lot of commissions. So like clearly I'm gonna defend commissions. I think, they, I think they're great. They help me pay my bills. So like, and I think it's a lot of room for creativity with commissions, even with portraits and likenesses. And if y'all think the Renaissance masters didn't have people sit for them so they could get likenesses, then you're kidding yourself and you should take an art history class because they'll tell you otherwise. Just a sketch, just a sketch. Gonna tighten it up 
and fix it especially her face because it doesn't look like her at all I'm hoping me singing to you guys will be so distracting that you'll forgive me The heck heck. Oh, I don't want to save this as a JPEG. This would have gone faster if I'd done it on paper. It's also like a hiccup between um, my stylist detecting when I'm putting down a line, like it's moving and it wasn't even making the line. Um, and I have a feeling I know what's causing that. I'm gonna have to have a discussion with somebody about that because this is just not, not, not tenable. No. Oh, I'm going to have to turn. All right. Had to turn off Discord. I didn't think anybody was going to be talking to me this evening. I'm really not excited about these likenesses. But like I said earlier, this is a relearning process for me. So, you know, do the best I can. Ugh, take what I can from the experience and try to do better next time. And that's, it's like everything for sure. But like, for sure, that's like the number one thing that I best advice I could give today to people who want to be artists is like, you know, Take what you can and throw the rest away. And with new material, even though I'm used to doing digital art, like this is a tablet I haven't used in like three years. On a computer I haven't used in, well, I use it, but I don't use it for art. But like if you're, let's say you're a convention artist and recording isn't like something you're thinking about and you're watching this video because you're interested in doing commissions, right? So like, don't be stubborn. If there's, if you're trying something new and if it's taking too long, go back to what you know. Um, I mean, clearly if they paid for like one media, you should do that media. You should do what you, or contact them and maybe explain that, you know, you can do it in that media, but after after messing around, doing some tests with it, you really think uh, you could do a better job if you were allowed to do it in something you're more comfortable with. And this is a watercolor commission. So like me doing this digital stage, that was so that I could get in there, tighten up their faces and try a few things. And the fact that I'm doing it the way I'm doing it is actually not serving that goal and it's me being stubborn and that's neither of those are good things in this regard like stubborn is great but if i can't pull a nice useful straight line then uh or if my computer doesn't read all of my input then you know it's not serving the goal of like getting a better sketch right it's serving the goal of i don't know vanity and uh me insisting on trying something new and you guys some of you guys have watched this channel long enough to like know that i'll get wild hairs and i'll decide to do that and then i have to work twice as hard to get the thing completed and please don't mistake me complaining about my choice of process which is a poor choice in this instance um with me complaining about the commission i'm absolutely not complaining about the commission
I'm just frustrated that my poor choices mean I'm going to have to take this on another computer and resketch it. And I'm walking, I'm subjecting you guys to this because I guess I want y'all to learn from my mistakes. Like I, the only, I feel like mistakes are only worthwhile if other people can learn from them. And, uh, you know, sometimes choosing to do something that is non-optimal for your artistic pro process is a mistake. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Help. I done goofed. That's why I also think it's important to uh, to think about the materials that are best for your process and not just the materials that everyone else uses. I mean, I encourage I want to encourage you guys to try new things and to play with different materials. But I also want to encourage you guys to think for yourselves and to do what's best for your art. Ugh. Oh, that's so wrong. All right, I think that is about as far as I can take this commission on this computer. I am going to save this and open it up on my Surface Pro and tighten and tweak everything so that it looks a lot more accurate. Then I'm gonna print it out on watercolor paper using an inkjet printer. So a printer that has a water-based dye ink, which will dissolve when I stretch my watercolor paper. And from then I will start uh painting over it so thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and watching this segment of this tutorial all right guys we're gonna do something kind of weird a little bit different um i don't intend to scan or uh stream i don't intend to record the entire time i'm working on this on my surface pro 3 but this is my surface pro 3 um this is my stylus it's a four stylus and i have a four keyboard and i have a pencil grip on my stylus you guys can see there well the the surface pro stylus is much smaller than the intuo stylus and you guys can see that the screen is a lot smaller than my surface pro drawing live drawing area and this is what i'm much more comfortable with drawing on so I have this base sketch and I'm really not excited about it. Um, I did work hard on it, but it doesn't mean I did good work, if that makes sense. You can work hard and not do good work. So I am re reducing the opacity and I'm laughing because I'm like, this is ridiculous. I can't believe I'm trying to show you guys what I'm doing by recording my screen, but I was having a a beast of a time, let's just say, um, with the Intuos. So what I'm going to do is, and I actually want to increase the opacity a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of redraw this and tighten it up because I am really dissatisfied with how it came out in the sketch. I feel like it doesn't really look like the couple it doesn't even really look like the couple in the style i was commissioned to draw them in which is like my house slash anime kind of aesthetic going on so i'm going to try redrawing them here on the screen i am the most comfortable with and apparently this computer is gonna fight me just like the other computer was gonna fight me. So I'm just gonna have to close some tabs and see if that will help. And it does, so, or it doesn't. 
it's just that kind of evening for me, I guess. Um, anyway, what I'm going to do is on another layer, maybe another couple layers, I'm gonna go over this, I'm gonna tighten it, I'm probably gonna remove my keyboard, I'm gonna try and make this look more like the people I'm actually drawing on a computer I'm more familiar with. And I will check in with you guys when I have it finished. We're gonna be up on the big screen so you guys can see it, not y'all looking at my Surface Pro 3 from some weird, I mean, you could you could do a stream like that. You could record like this, I guess, um, but it's really not optimal, but we are trying new things and learning new things tonight. So I thought it would be fun to show you guys how I intend on fixing my digital mistakes. All right, guys, so you guys can see the uh, finished sketch for this commission. I took it onto my Surface Pro and I tightened it up because I felt like I had a little more control on my Pro than I did on my Intuos tablet. I am going to print this out onto, I'm actually going to convert it to blue lines and I can do that for you guys right now. This will be the first time I believe we've done a uh, video version of my blue line. So we're going to go to image mode grayscale, can go ahead and merge, can go ahead and discard. Then we're going to go to adjustments, curves, and kind of around the front of the graph, the beginning of the graph, we're going to drag that all the way down. And then towards the back of the graph, we're going to draw it, drive that drag ugh, that all the way over. And then we're going to toggle are uh, where those points are until we are able to drop most of our sketch lines. Now, a lot of them will go away once we, um, once we add the water, once we stretch our paper. Uh, now we're gonna go to image, image size. I'm gonna wanna print this at, I think I want the finished image to be, see, so it is a nine by 12 commission and that can, be taken one of two ways. One way you printed it or you did it on nine by 12 paper with maybe like a half inch border all around. I would prefer to just do, um, no, wait a minute. Oh, I see now, this will be fine. Okay, I would prefer to do it big and uh, then trim it so that the live area, the area that is painted is nine by 12 or approximately. So I will go to image and then I'll go to canvas size and this will actually add height to your canvas instead of just stretching it or just changing the live area. So our width is good. We want our height to be 14. So as you can see, it adds some on. Then we're gonna go to image mode duotone and I have, ah, perfect. I can demonstrate how to make a non-photo blue for you guys. So we're gonna click that. We're going to change our C to 24, our M to zero, our Y to four or lower, and our K to zero. And that gives us very light, non-photo blue. And that's how you make non-photo blue. I went ahead and printed my blue lines out onto some Canson 140 pound watercolor paper. This is the cold pressed paper with a cold pressed texture. You guys can ever so faintly see the blue lines. I'm gonna pencil them partially so I can see them and uh, partially so you guys can see them and entirely so we can get this painting done. If you're interested in seeing how the blue line magic happens, I've got a video all about that and you can click that here.
So this has been penciled and it actually ended up being, it looks really different from the sketch I did. The sketch is more realistic and I really like the sketch. And this is more um, of sort of that anime style that I think the commissioner wanted. So it actually turned out well, but I am still glad that I did the sketch the way I did. And I think that was a good way to practice multiple things that needed to be practiced. So my next step is I'm going to stretch this. I'm not going to stretch it on camera because that takes up a lot of space. And I'll check in with you guys again. Actually, I also want to cut it down so it's a little bit smaller. So it's actually nine by 12. Um, and then I'll check in with you guys after it has been stretched. Hey guys, so let's go ahead and get to painting. I want to put something underneath my board to help prop it up on this table. And that way it's not drawing flat. Let me see if I can adjust the camera. And you guys can see my work area is incredibly tight and somewhat frustrating here. I'm gonna do the best I can. And that means shoving some stuff off the table because it doesn't really belong there. Now, the first thing I wanna do is I want to do an all over tone not an Oliver tone, an Oliver tone. And it looks like it's kind of a gray day. So the commissioner did not pay to include a full background, but the commissioner also didn't specify a background. So oh, I feel kind of bad. I mean, given what he paid for, I could just do a gray wash and that would be it. But I feel kind of bad doing just that. Um, my art has kind of progressed away from that. So I'm going to try maybe hinting in a background and we'll see how it goes. I feel like even doing some color would help, but we'll see. I also am not getting paid for the extra hours, so I need to be fair to myself as an artist who needs food to eat and doesn't have endless amounts of free time. And that is a consideration that you guys should take into consideration, obviously, if you're working as artists or if you want to work as artists is that you can't, and I'm so guilty of this, that's why I bring it up to you guys, you can't give it all away for free. You can't upgrade people so much that they value everything you do at nothing because you, you've given away so much of it for free. And I wish that weren't the case, but people definitely do that. So, I'm going to do an all over wash, except I am avoiding their faces. And I wish I'd grabbed some paper towels before I got started on this. Because I'm gonna need to dab up some of this. So the first I'm going to do is I'm just going to dab in their general area. Fortunately, it's kind of a wet day outside today. Then using a clean brush with just a little bit of water in it. There we go, I'm gonna kind of blend that in. And then I'm going to give that a chance to dry. Okay, so this has had a chance to dry. First thing I'm going to do is mix up, I think, so we have like three zones here. We have the gray sky, which we basically covered. And I can even just go in. And sort of letting the paper texture create a dry brush effect, which gives kind of like a mackerel sky look to the background here. I want to go lower with that, in fact, because now I can leave it and then just paint the trees up into it. Then 
I want to grab a couple of different browns. So probably burnt umber and sepia. Let's see. The ground comes to about midway on them. And I'm just going to really gesturally paint it in. Fortunately, they're both wearing very dark colors, so I can even be a little loose without it looking sloppy or bad. And I want to leave that dry brush effect in since this is a loose gestural sort of background. And I honestly, if I wasn't working around all these clothing details, I could use like a big flat and get this accomplished even, even more satisfyingly. Even better, something like that. <laughs> we would have better results if we had switched over or if we switch over to a giant uh, flat. But I have all these details that I, even though I say it's gonna be black, and it doesn't actually matter too much. Say that and I get it right in her dress. Fortunately, Arches is extremely forgiving and you can just dab that up really quick. Okay, so I'm going to work wet and wet, grabbing some more water. And grabbing some more color. Get start. Actually, there we go. problem with synthetics is they always want to kick up splatters. So I'm just adding a little bit. See the thing about watercolor and sometimes the frustrating thing about watercolor is it dries a lot lighter then it goes down. So while this might look like a good color already and just needs a little bit of work, it's going to be a lot lighter by the time it is dried. That is a warmer color than I expected. That's okay. Then I'm going to let that dry. Let me move so you guys can see that a little bit better. Now the fence is a gray wooden color. Well, it's like, um, it's gray and brown. So I could do a little bit of indigo. You need more than that. A little bit of indigo. Well, too much now. One of those mornings. A little bit of, say, there we go. That should be a good color for that. And that goes up to middle of her head. I kind of want the two areas to blend together. I'm feeling that's not going to work today. I can try. 
And I'm hoping that once I start painting the figures and I paint them in enough detail, the background is not going to be the focus. So people are not going to care so much if the background is kind of sketched in. It does look like we're getting a little bit of bloom on the ground, which is actually what I wanted. That's my hand here. Get in there. And then some areas of the fence. Are darker than others. Working wet into wet and dab in some of that darker bluish brown kind of gray tone we mixed up. Give that all a chance to dry. Okay, so the fence is, for the most part, for right now, done. I'm going to grab some Hooker's Green and a little bit of Windsor Green. And I need to actually mix up a fair amount since this is a thirsty paper. going to start just sketching in some of the pine trees that are in the background. I probably should have done this first and then did the fence, but I needed the fence to sort of tell me how far I could go. I'm not trying to copy the background exactly. I just, since they're at a Ren Fair, I know a fence, dirt, and trees does not really read as Ren Fair. <laughs> but I did want, when they looked at, when the people of this commission is intended, the intended recipients, uh, when they get this piece, I do at least want them to be like, oh, I recognize that, without, like I said, signing myself up for a bunch of additional work that wasn't discussed or agreed upon. It's always been kind of my difficulty with doing these cheaper commissions is that a lot of this stuff is it really helps and it really helps the piece. Um, and if I don't include it, it makes uh, it reflects kind of poorly on me as an artist because the piece looks unfinished, uh, but it wasn't paid for. And most commissioners would probably bulk at the increase in price because we're still kind of struggling with the idea of people purchasing commissions as gifts or for themselves. Um, most people would, you know, just take a selfie and then get that printed at like Walgreens rather than think to hire an artist for about the same amount of money to do a sketch. So I'm trying to normalize commissions again, make them something people consider having in their homes. And sometimes that means I'm working at price points that are difficult for me to work around. And I'll let that dry and then I'm gonna go back in. Oh, wait, let's, let's move that over a little bit. And I don't mind if things sort of um, blossom really and bleed uh, because that kind of since we're working on like a nature background right now that kind of adds to the effect that irregularity and I'm gonna do a 
another layer and even though I am trying to work around the figures I don't want it to be apparent that I'm trying to work around the figures and I could even go in with some colorless masking fluid and just sort of mask off some areas and that way I could work a little more loosely like here in the background where it, it's too regular a, pa a pattern and we're gonna brush in some sepia here in the foreground and try to work around their clothes oh <laughs> and give that a chance to dry so the ground is still kind of wet over here which is going to make it kind of difficult for me to paint in that area or paint above it so i'm just going to add some low because they're basically standing on what looks like mulch which is probably because at the Hammond Ren Fair it gets super damp and wet and kind of like a quagmire so they probably did actually put down mulch for attendees to stand on so I'm going to try and hint at that which I also did up there. And then I'm gonna try to get my strokes larger and a little more watered down as we go. And that way I can do even another layer of detail. Hopefully leaving a little bit of the white of the paper isn't gonna be distracting for the viewer. It's just going to help create sort of nice contrast Let that dry as well. So the ground is still drying and that's okay because I'm going to go ahead and paint in the pine tree trunk in the background. I'm mixing indigo with sepia. I'm just going to freehand it in there. and give those a chance to dry. So once this dries, I'm considering going in and uh, doing the lines on the fence. They're visible in the picture. Uh, and if they turn out well, they'll look great. If they turn out poorly, oh, they're gonna look terrible and be distracting. And so I'm only considering it. Now, one of the reasons I was willing 
to try sketching in a background for this is because I have I've done a lot of um, like field painting, but I haven't necessarily tried these techniques on an actual illustration. Usually I'll use like two point perspective and figure everything out kind of accurately. And that's an additional hour to hour and a half added to the completion time. So, practicing putting what I've learned doing like field sketching. To use, and that's why I'm willing to kind of try this without charging the commissioner any additional money for the background because this is a test and it might go terribly wrong hopefully not I'd have to redo it if it went terribly wrong <laughs> and that would add another five days to the completion time and that would be really hard on me because I need to have this finished before I go out of town Also, wait until the very end and then see if I need to do, need to add that. Those lines, I mean. Trying to use kind of a organic gestural motion, not trying to render the leaves too closely because that's going to detract away from the people in the foreground. Which is not my intention. And I think after I hit these, finish doing these trees, I need to step away from working on the background and work on the people instead. Because I don't want the background to get too rendered and the foreground not get rendered enough. And honestly, Saw how it flicked that, and I'm using a Princeton 4850 round in case that is something you want to avoid having happen in your paintings. I really like sort of those blossoming effects, especially like in the background. So. going to sort of lightly delineate the fence from the background. want to gray down some of those trees too because they're very blue green so I'm going to use some Payne's gray and I'm probably going to also use some brown and we're just going to sort of tone some of these trees down because they're 
They're gonna dry a little bit lighter for sure, but they are very intense compared to like how gray the day is. They're kind of uh, cartoony green. And yeah, this is the commissioner did purchase an anime style portrait. So I could leave it cartoony green, but I think adding some gray and muting it down is a better choice. Because then we're not going to be as distracted away from the people. So now I can make progress on to skin tones now that the background is kind of at least blocked in and she is paler and a little pinker than he is so i'm going to mix up two different skin tones i'm going to mix hers up and then his and i apologize that i can't show you the mixes i just don't have room on the table so to help make up for that i'll just zoom in so you guys can see or try to zoom in so you guys can see what i'm painting a little bit better And switching over to natural hair brushes, I'm just kind of going to do a fill on her face of the base color. Give those a chance to dry. Now they're both wearing a lot of really dark colors. It's a little hard to see everything that's going on, but I'm gonna, of course, give it my best. And his boots are black, but they have kind of a gray undercast to them. So I'm gonna go ahead and handle the gray. And then, working wet into wet. No, oh, too much water. It's okay. I'm going to brush some preliminary black onto his boots and that way we're going to get kind of a dispersed effect. And his doublet is mainly gray with some dark red. So. And I just realized this area up there should probably be black. That's okay. We painted it the gray of the fence, so I think we should be able to easily cover that. Painting on lovely arches is always a treat. I was really also enjoying Kilimanjaro paper. If you're looking for impromptu paper wrecks, the Kilimanjaro paper I did my Christmas card video on. That stuff is beautiful to paint on as well and very affordably priced too. So if you're on a art budget, that is a good way to go. So I've got some green gold and I'm going to do a light coating first because she's wearing velvet and it's actually very beautiful in my opinion I really like green gold so she's got this really pretty green gold velvet underdress bodice kind of thing going on I want to make sure I capture that as well as possible don't necessarily have a lot of practice painting velvet so this is going to be a bit of a learning curve for me but hopefully hopefully we'll overcome it okay. 
And then I'll brush in, not all over, but sort of wet into wet, brush in some additional Windsor Newton Green Gold. And go ahead and add some water to some other greens, kind of, because there's like a little hint of blue to it. Maybe I should go with a hooker's green. Um, lightly brush that in. Don't want to lose the gold aspects of the highlights. But I definitely want to capture just how much green gold shades. So working wet into wet, I'm going to paint in a little bit of hooker's green. We'll see how that turns out when it dries. Hopefully it works out well though. So this hasn't fully dried. <laughs> Although this hasn't fully dried, her sleeves are still wet. I really like um, the the blend, the transition with the darker green. I think that was a good choice. Sometimes blending things like that can be a little bit up in the air for me. Feels like no matter how many times I do it, it's still uh, <laughs> still something to be. It's like holding your breath. It's like magic, right? Like either it works or it doesn't, and you can't always count on it to work but I am pleased to see that it looks like it's worked this time. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bitty bit. Can't really move the camera and I apologize for that. I'm gonna add a little bit of red and they are both so tiny on this paper that I have to be very careful very delicate hand but going to use the red at this stage so that it's kind of a under color for the other under color for the other colors I want to do and I've got the reference up so this is going to be kind of a combination of um, say an anime style portrait and a realistic portrait because I can easily reference what's going on and that means I can get some really accurate color choices. This is fun. I'd kind of missed doing. I used to do um, portrait, like reference portrait studies in the evenings before I really started doing the YouTube channel and I miss doing that, but I just don't really have the time to do it anymore. And this is kind of a throwback to that and it's nice. It's something I missed being able to do. Could probably record doing them because I know some of you guys would really like to see me work on realistic things. Start on that white bandolier. And in the picture, it looks gray. So I'm gonna use some Payne's gray to get it started. And I need to do some on his cuff. But that can wait. Oh, I need to do her dress too. 
and that is a darker. It's the same material, but because it's further down and further away from the light, it's not catching as much of the light, so you don't get so many of like the gold highlights as you get mostly green and blue-green. Probably why I think that velvet is so beautiful, because it really has a lot of colors going on in it. going to want. Actually, I'll zoom out because you guys can't see what I'm doing. Blend out on his boots because I do want that color blend, that transition. It's like his hand is dried so I can go on in and do the white on his cuff and then the hilt of his sword has like a white sort of sun emblem thing going on. And then we can go in with the green gold and work start working on the bottom of her skirt. Right, now I'm going to grab some of that hooker's green we used up at the top. And I want also to point out that I am going to paint over this and tighten it up. I just wanted to be able to get some of those soft and subtle blends. To begin with, and I've actually written about doing really nice, soft, subtle blends. Can I? There we go. Really nice, soft, subtle blends in your paintings. Atmospheric blends at natosoup.blogspot.com. So if you like how I handle that, you can definitely check out that post and I'll link it here. So to start working on his shirt, which is a bit of a challenge because it is mostly a very dark, looks like in the picture at least, a very dark gray. to show up but I still need and I don't want a mask so I still need to accurately capture just how dark the gray is while it's still being a gray so I'm working fairly thick with the pan color but also leaving myself unfilled areas that can be blended with water and will hopefully read as well blended. It's going to be one of my big challenges is achieving nice crisp folds in the fabric. His pants are also, looks like that same dark paints, gray, maybe even a Prussian blue. So I'll grab some indigo and mix that in. Then, I'm going to blend that out. There we go. Maybe even add some extra water so it sort of pushes it.
then I need to give, of course, that a chance to dry. Okay. Said that, but as I'm looking at her skirt, I'm like, oh, now would be a fine chance for me to mix in some dark blue. And that way it'll all dry as one piece look coherent. A couple of areas up at the top where I can start. that in. And then with some clean water, blend some of them so it doesn't have as sharp an edge. Because I want some to have kind of a sharp edge and then some to be a little more blended. So I like how the velvet on her dress is coming along. I am going to go ahead and apply another layer of skin tone. And I want to make sure, because I've been doing so much green, I want to make sure my brush is clean and you guys can see a lot of green and blue up there in the ferrule that I want to get rid of. And I need to do the same for the other brush that I use for her skin or for their skin. go ahead and mix at least her skin tone oh we're getting some green in her skin which I'll leave it because it's not too extreme and it reads as local color so it's kind of a little happy accident there I'll take them when I can get them usually my <laughs> accidents tend to fall under the catastrophic category so I'll take the happy ones when I can get the happy ones Definitely going to need to mix the skin tones a little bit darker. I think I'm going to want to add a little bit of red to his hands. So while it's still wet, I'll go ahead and blend that in. And do the same. And then I'll add just a little bit more yellow ochre to her skin mix. And in the picture, they're kind of shaded with gray. And I sort of want to avoid doing that because it's going to, um, it's really going to cool down their skin tones a lot. And since they are in kind of a hybrid style for this piece, um, I think I might go with what I usually use when I'm doing like cartoony skin tones, which is a red violet mix to shade their skin. And then if I need to cool it down even more, I can use or even custom mix a gray that might suit their skin tones a bit better. Painting people, especially real humans, is always a challenge because you really want to capture that likeness, otherwise you didn't really paint them at all. At least that's how I feel. But, and fortunately, this is a really good looking couple. So this is not an issue with them. But with some people, um, you are 
torn between capturing a likeness and also making them look like they think they look in their heads. And I'm sure I would be one of those people um, who have a hard time with that because like the way I draw myself and the way I see myself in my head isn't really, not really how I look. So you, if you are doing portraits, you're also struggling with capturing um, their mental illness. Um, <laughs> Ouch. Mental image. What am I thinking? You're capturing their mental image of themselves while still being true to them. And often you don't have any insight into how they see themselves. So you're just kind of guessing. Um, <laughs> that's maybe that's where mental illness comes in. You make yourself an anxious mess trying to read minds. That's certainly one of my problems. I'll really stress myself out working on commissions. where I'm trying to satisfy the need for it to look like them and also make it as flattering as possible. And while trying to figure out what acts, what parts of themselves, what they want to highlight without them actually giving me the benefit of telling me what they want highlighted. It's always a good time. Comic artist slash mind reader, that's me. You know, all in the paid job description. But in a way, if you do this, if you do portraits regularly, you get to be, definitely will hone your people skills because you get kind of good at reading people and figuring out what they're looking for and how to make that happen. It's definitely a skill I developed doing so many conventions, dealing with so many customers over the years, figuring out their hopes and dreams, and then putting it on paper. It's nice though when they actually tell me up front because then I can give them what they want without any of the subtext. I am really pleased with how this dress is coming along. Go in there. Grab some little, little bit of green gold in there too. And try to start tightening it up without lifting layers. Clean that out, switch on over, and see if I can get another layer on her skin. And I think I'm gonna need to mix darker skin, still, blah, 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 darker skin, darker still. Cause it's not quite the color I want it to be. but it's getting there and I'm pretty pleased with the progress I've been able to make. So they both have sort of blonde tint to their hair, but it's not entirely blonde. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I can't necessarily do it on her just yet. Can I do it on him? What I want to do is underpaint some Payne's gray Oh. Okay. 
And that way, when I go ahead and start painting their hair in, in the correct color, I don't have to worry too much. Actually, I should zoom in if possible for you guys. I don't have to worry too much about making sure I get the shadows. Oh, that's going to be too dark. Because the shadows will have already been taken care of with this underpainting. And I apologize. Keep hitting the camera with the long handle on my brush. I actually am going to add just a smidgen of Payne's Gray to her hand since in the picture it does have a little hint of gray and then go ahead and put the base color on the hilt of his sword which is sort of goldish color. So I'm going to start with yellow and then work my way darker to yellow ochre. Then his belt is a very dark brown but there's an area where it hits the light right here. And I'm going to go ahead and I don't want the whole belt to be that color because it's a real oh and he also has sort of like a, like a satchel sort of thing which is a lighter reddish brown sort of color Copic tends to call leather <laughs> which is funny because leather can be so many colors so many use like a burnt sienna as my base brush in some more and then I'm going to grab some Venetian red which I just used over there so that should work pretty well. Then just kind of fluff it with my brush, distribute that color a little bit better. I don't want it to be like a perfect distribution, I just don't want it to be really opaque and hard to work with in one area. And then I missed part of the white of his shirt down there. So taking a little bitty bit of Payne's Gray. And go ahead and get that. This really becomes fun to do once it starts coming together. And for me, it's so much easier when I have a nice large photo reference and I'm not cobbling together multiple things because I can kind of just think about the colors I'm using and the subject matter and detach away from having to make a bunch of decisions so I can, I feel like I can do more with the paint itself. And then he has this area where, and I can't see what exactly it is, but there's like a dark red pattern. So grabbing some naphthamide maroon, I can start laying that in. And since I can't exactly see what it is, I'm just gonna freehand an attractive sc scroll work. a lighter, more intense red. Then I want to start their hair and I don't really have a yellow. That is quite what I'm looking for. So I'm going to use a very watered down 
light yellow ochre for the first pass. And her hair is lighter than his, so I'll start with hers and then mix it darker. Because it's easy to mix things darker, it's hard to mix things lighter. At least a lot of paint that way. Well, you don't have to, you could actually take an eyedropper, select some of that paint, and then put it in another well and add a lot of water to it. So it doesn't have to be, but it's hard to color, it can be hard to color match once you've sort of started adjusting. And right now it looks like that Payne's gray is just too dark, but hopefully we can do a good job marrying the two together and make it look more like shadows. And looking a little more saturated. See, one of the reasons I wanted to do an underglaze as my shadow is because yellow ochre is opaque and it can be very hard to get a glaze on top of it without it becoming muddy. So, visually muddy, I should say. So sometimes it's easier to work with an underglaze and then you can lay your, your opaque colors on top of that. Now his hair has more brown, but it's still very light. But All right, so I know last night I was working on their hair and I know um, I mentioned getting on to his. Unfortunately, all of my cards ran out of room, which is fine. So I went ahead and cleared them all. And now we're at a fresh, brand new day. And rather than jumping in on his hair, I'm going to jump in on their skin, especially since the colors for their skin that I mixed up yesterday have had a chance to kind of evaporate and condense a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that more intense color and go ahead and start getting some of their skin shading in. It's usually one of the things that takes me the longest because it's one of those things that kind of tends to be the most important. At least in my art, it definitely tends to be the most important. Now I can also get onto his skin tone as promised. His hair is a little bit of a darker blonde than hers. It's actually a much darker blonde. And I'll wait to do his facial hair until we're just about finished. That's going to be one of the final touches. I still need to shade his face.
then going in with a dark brown, like burnt umber, while working wet into wet. That way I'll get some really nice, hopefully really nice, at least diffused blending in her hair. getting started again on his belt and I'm grabbing a warm dark brown a layer on his saddle bag kind of thing I really love all these sort of waist pouches and stuff I draw Kara with them sometimes I ought to draw her with them more often and I love, I love them because they look like something borrowers or Lilliputians would have, so. Perfect for hidden goodies or at a Ren Fair, your cell phone and maybe some lip balm and definitely your money. And hers is more of a black brown. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to underpaint it with Payne's Gray and that'll kind of neutralize whatever brown I put on top of it. I bet her belt is made from the same leather. So I'll also do the same to her belt. And hopefully, I don't think I can finish it today because I had a sick headache all today. And that's kind of thrown off my timing, and that's okay. Get her teeth and the tops of their eyes as well. And I'm actually going to probably... I might leave his because his eyes are kind of more shaded than hers. Um, here's up a little bit. And blend out if I can her teeth and if I can't then I can go back in with wash and fix that later Then I can start on the sword and that underpaint. So I'm using yellow ochre, and that underpainting was a good idea because that's really making it pop as golden. So you do that as the first layer. All right, so we're almost at the stage where I'm ready to start painting in all of these large fields of color, but I do have a few smaller details I wanna to get to before I hit that stage. So I need to do the gold trim on her sleeves and dress. I'm gonna do it the same way. I've already started the hilt of his sword where we do an underpainting with a really nice sunny yellow. This is probably Windsor yellow, which is a nice primary yellow. And I'm actually on the market for one more. I'm actually looking for a cool influenced yellow because I've got two really nice warm influ- well actually three. I've got Indian yellow, New Gamboge, and Windsor yellow. And I'm on the market for one more. Cool Influence Yellow. 
Then I need to do the tie on her purse, which is kind of a creamy color. So I'm going to use the pre-mixed skin tone and then blend it out a little bit. It's a good start for that. And I went and grabbed another mixing palette so I can get started with the under colors, the shadow colors for their skin tones. Actually going to mix maybe a couple different versions since in the reference photo, there's a lot of, um, a lot of gray and purple and I'm a little afraid that's going to mute them out too much. So I'm gonna mix a warm one using a naphthamide maroon and then a cooler one using a purple and a little bit, very judicious amount, I hope, of Payne's Gray. Don't want them to look like zombies, although I'm sure they wouldn't mind. I think they're both fans of The Walking Dead, um, but that's not really what this picture is all about, so. All right, I'm gonna start, I think, with the cooler one. Um, I'm going to use another brush to sort of blend that out a little bit. And I'm actually going to pick up some on the hand because that is a little more than I'd wanted. And on her face too because now that I blended it out it wants to be funny. And then definitely under his chin because that would be a directly cast shadow. And it's not so harsh on him because his skin tone is actually a little bit darker. So it's a little more fitting for a darker shadow like that. And then I'll do under his nose as well. I'm having a problem with her hand where I'm losing a lot of the definition. So I'm gonna just add a darker shade of the skin tone and leave that as is. start mixing up that warmer shadow color for skin. Maybe that's what I should have gone with from the beginning. I told you guys earlier, skin is often the thing that takes the longest for me because it's a lot of back and forth and fixing things, letting it dry, seeing where we're at. Skin is one of those things that you really can't get away with in my opinion. Just faking or rushing really. Soften that out a little bit. Not happy with her face over there, so I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna give her another layer of skin tone on that side of the face. But I can start, hopefully, mixing up the black for his cape and the brown on her skirt. And I'm just going to go with a straight lamp black for his cape. Not really going to do a lot of undercolor 
because that is blown out in this picture. I could not even tell you what it originally was. And then her skirt is a warm brown. So I'm going to grab some Van Dyke brown and some burnt umber and some sepia. And maybe if I can't get it red enough or warm enough, I'll even add in a little bit of maroon just to make sure I get a nice warm dark brown and some of the appeal to that is it's going to contrast really nicely with that green in her skirt. And remember, this is still too light, honestly, for her skirt. It's a good, it's a good first pass. Um, and it's going to dry even lighter. Well, maybe not too, too much lighter, hopefully. Because it's a good start, a good base color. Then... Just going to go ahead and pick up some sepia straight from the pan and I'm gonna start putting that in and that way it'll be nice and soft. I painted myself into a corner because I want to get over here. starts to be dry up here so I'll just keep painting this in and then work my way down into where it's wet and then over here same thing. All right, I think that, as weird as that might look, I think that is a really good start for that. Now, we have some black to start painting in. And remember, I said I messed up over here because it should be black like. the rest of his coat rather than the fence. Let's start by fixing that. And then I'm going to I'm trying to work around her hair and not cause a big mess. down and then sort of blend in some black and this area is probably going to be a solid black fill regardless but I like having options and starting it kind of light means that I can choose to leave like a bit of rim lighting around it and maybe make it a little easier to differ differentiate. And then same thing over here. And this may get painted over, or it may not. It probably will. It's probably not. What I'm doing now is probably not going to be dark enough. 
when it dries. So. And then I'm going to let both of them dry thoroughly. So the first layer of black on his cloak is not dry yet. Everything else does seem to be dry though. And it looks like her bodice is a bit darker to begin with than her skirt. So I'm gonna grab some Van Dyke Brown and working around the wet areas on his cloak. I'm gonna to start to fill her bodice in with our first layer of color. Also, go ahead and do another layer on his saddlebag. Now let that dry as well. One of the things that I really, really love about um, these kind of cotton rag papers is that you can just really do a lot of nice stuff on them. They can, however, um, and I'm using a brush that's gotten kind of beaten up. It's gotten kind of sloppy. So it's time to switch. Um, it can be harder for me to pull finer details at the size I'm painting with the amount of detail I'm trying to include. Because you guys will notice, I mean, there's definitely artists who paint micro paintings. I'm not trying to claim that I'm like in some special category that exists only to me. But most artists who do do portraits, um, they do work larger than what I'm working at. And I may be trying to pull too much detail from too small a size. That might just be on me. But I do sometimes have, as beautiful as this paper is, I do ha sometimes have trouble doing the sort of detail work that I would like on it. At least compared to my comic page standby which is Anton Montval. Now I can't do nearly the nice blending, the nice lifting, all the nice effects that I can do on Canson, I mean on arches, I can't do that on Montval. That's just not going to happen. So both nice papers and cheap papers have their selling points and their disadvantages. And that's why I still continue to test out loads of papers and review different types of papers because you're always discovering, or I find I'm always discovering something, something new to love, like uh, Kilimanjaro is a new favorite. And while I can share my recs, with you guys, um, you know, it's still a personal taste thing. What I like and what is useful for you guys might be completely different, even if we had the same style going on, just because, you know, how we handle our brushes could be very different.
So I encourage you guys to, of course, check out my reviews if you're looking for recommendations. But also, try it out yourself. If something sounds good, give it a whirl. If you can afford to do so, I know that's often, there's often a big cost factor there, unfortunately. Uh, fortunately, though, a lot of those nice papers sell small packs that are very affordable. So if you don't mind working tiny, you can often figure out if you like something before you're wholly committed to it. And although I'm not a fan of Chance, uh, no, of uh, Strathmore's watercolor paper overall, um, they do sell the little ATC cards. So I do like that you can get a taste for their cards at a very affordable price. And then, remember, I said I need to fix her face, so let's hope this is the right thing. It looks so dark though. And I'm kind of frustrated because I desaturated her skin tone too much. And it's definitely a gray day in that photo, which makes color selection a little difficult because I'm torn between reflecting the day and trying to reflect her skin tone. Hopefully when that dries that will help a little bit. So everything has had a chance to dry. I can go in and do, I should probably actually be smart and do her skirt before I do his cloak since my hand rests over, her, uh, over his cloak when I'm painting her skirt. Being smart would be a good thing. And since my initial color, my initial pass wasn't really dark enough, pretty much just doing a fill. And I'll have to at least give this side of her dress a chance to dry before I can start painting in his cloak since they are adjacent. This old shoot up brush just doesn't pull a point like it used to. Adding in a little bit more Payne's Gray. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that brush away because it has caused enough problems. But actually, so is this one. Let's see if we can find one that really has the point it claims to have. All 
quite cool to the touch, but mostly dry. So we can go in. And hopefully, be able to get some nice clean lines in this black fill. I'm going to leave a little bit of rim lighting. In the reference I have, the cloak is pretty much just solid black, no shadows, no highlights. I'm going to try and sketch some in since that's more believable. In a painting, people don't, or at least in a painting like this, people don't really expect to see um, just a flat black fill necessarily. Kind of looks like the artist didn't bother to finish her job, even if that's all you've got to work with. And then I can actually, hopefully, without it bleeding too much. It's another arches problem, is it does like to bleed. Get in there and tighten up that hand a little bit. So I know it looks like I'm only using one shade of black which would just be total black, but I'm actually using a watered down version as well to help hopefully knock in some areas of shadow. And we'll put in that fold there and then I'll use some straight black to just kind of delineate his arm. Fortunately, I don't think the camera is going to pick up any of that. So that is just my lot in life. Now, while this dries, I still have work to do on her dress and on her belt, but I want to start going in again. painting in the mulch a little bit darker. So I'm going to dual wield me some brushes. I'm so sorry, you guys can't even see that. Let me adjust that angle. Glad I noticed it before we got too far. So there's still plenty that can be done, so. Still room for observation. Then I'm going to do some in the foreground too. Yeah, 
and give all of that a good wang jangle, I mean, chance to dry. Can't zoom in too, too much because then you guys won't be able to see it, but I'm gonna go ahead and go in and start doing a layer of yellow ochre on her gold trim. And I'm gonna go ahead and start activating some of my richer yellow ochres so that I can do the details on his sword. And grabbing a very thin line. Can I zoom in? Yes. Of Payne's Gray. And some more cream on the tie on her belt slash pouch thing. I'd like to go ahead and do another layer on that pouch. I'm going to leave a little bit of rim lighting there. some blending there on the highlight. That seems like a really good color for her dress. I probably did not mix enough of it though. There's already so many dark colors going on in the picture. I don't know. I don't think I want to go too dark with her dress. Uh, would just hate for this whole picture to, <laughs> to just be very dark. So I think that is a good level of intensity. So, I just called the person who commissioned this piece to ask what color their eyes were, and they couldn't tell me. And that is kind of frustrating, but, but I do know them, and it, well, I am pretty sure, especially zoomed in, that he, they both have kind of like lightish, bluish green colored eyes. So for both of them, I went ahead and I put down a little bit of uh, Payne's gray and then I went over that with some blue green and we'll see what we have 
after it's had a chance to dry, I'm adding a little bit of red to her lips. I'm really trying to be careful since I'm drawing in her top lip now. And that should dry a little lighter than it is right now. I want to be careful because I don't want to bleed in with the eyes. I'm zoom in so you guys can see better. And I want to do add some pink onto her hands as well. But not that much. Then, I want to do the lowlights on her, uh, the velvet part of her dress using um, marine blue mixed with indigo. And not mix so thickly that you can't see the green anymore. I know I keep going back to how beautiful the velvet color is in the photo. But it really is a nice color. The shading on it makes it very rich. So I think I'm finally at the point where I can start working on maybe pulling some tighter details. Which I'm concerned will be a little difficult. Because for you guys to see what I'm doing... I have to have the camera in a certain area and I can't really move it too, too much. So I may get to a point where I just can't record what I'm doing because I do owe it to the customer to give them the commission they paid for. I will try to record as much as I feasibly can, especially since my work often comes together most at sort of final stages. think though at least her dress is about where I want it to be other than finishing up the gold trim okay 
Okay. Time to try and start tightening up these details while managing to capture most of it on camera. We'll see how well this goes. I may have to start removing the clips mid video. We'll see. They definitely do get in the way, but when I'm adding so much water to the paper, they tend to be really useful and important. So I'm going in with a brown, it's probably just burnt umber, and I'm sort of trying to make that underpainting look um, just better blended in and more hair-like, more um, sort of streaks and just a little more delicate than what I had initially put down. I was sort of sketching it in and I was really hoping that um, with a couple of layers, it would look more natural. Ah, grab the wrong brown. And it never really did that, so. I think I'm going to use a, a watercolor pencil to do his facial hair. And that way I can get it just right instead of trying to fight with it. So it is finally time to start putting in some of those finer details and I'm going to start with his facial hair and try to do it justice and I may need to do like activate this layer and do an underpainting. Hopefully that will dry a little bit lighter than it's going down because it is very red. Whereas when the pencil is dry it's a bit more brown. do the same with hers. Well, her eyebrows. <laughs> and that one got a little bit out of control.
so I'm going to have to come in on that one a little bit further down the line. And this is day three of watercolor painting this commission. So hopefully this is our last day. This is definitely a make or break sort of stage for me because it's so many fine details. Let's see if I can zoom in any more for you guys. Hey, you guys, a secret. This is just about murder on my neck and back. Because in order to record for you guys, I have to hunch over while I work. And that definitely takes its toll. I would love to have a better recording set up for next year. When I was a young girl, my mom had this Disney Christmas Carol CD and Chip and Dale sing Hurry Christmas. And all I can think is hurry Ikea, hurry fast, need a table that doesn't suck, can't lean over like a schmuck. Need a better working place, Ikea, don't be late. Except, 2009 is, or 2019 is way too long to wait. I'm not getting any younger, so. I may have to just find somewhere else to get my better setup from. I might not even do the white gouache highlights I normally do might not be necessary. I 
Okay, are we going to do anything with that fence? Now would be the time to decide. Okay, I think, and there's like no way for me to really adjust my camera, but I think after this dries, I am going to be finished. All right, guys, so I can't really get the camera at a better angle for you guys, but it is time to finally remove this from the board. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all the clips and then I'm going to go ahead and remove all the blue tape. And there we go. One finished, somewhat realistic, somewhat cartoony watercolor commission for you guys. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for this watercolor tutorial. I hope you guys found it helpful. I hope you found it useful. And heck, I hope you found it inspiring. If you guys want information on how to get your own commission from me, you can check that out in the description down below. And I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I'll see you guys really soon. Bye guys.